Very exciting day today. It's ACC tip-off day in Charlotte. Another mark in the steps towards the start of the college basketball season. 26 days and counting from the first Duke men's basketball game of the year. We've got a lot to discuss on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Let's get to it. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. It's so great to have you here with us on the show today, Wednesday, October 12th, 2022. Today is ACC tip-off day for Duke men's basketball. Is there another step closer to the start of the men's basketball season? We'll have John Shire, Jeremy Roach, and Jacob Grandison in Charlotte meeting with the media all day to preview the upcoming year. Locked On Blue Devils is a daily podcast talking about everything going on in the life of Duke Athletics. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch the show daily or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star rating and written review. For today's show, I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football and college basketball recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. You can follow me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore and follow the show on Twitter as well at LO underscore Blue Devils. Let's welcome in today's guest to the program. It's one of my very good buddies, Brian Horace at Duke Blogger on Twitter. Haven't got a chance to chat with Brian since June. Time has flown by, but here we are 26 days away from the start of the season. Brian, I hope you're doing well, and thanks again for coming on the program today. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Things are going good. We're so close. I mean, it's it's time uh, less than a month away, obviously. We've got the big ACC tip-off event here. Uh, you know, the media loves this opportunity to get to meet with all 15 schools there in Charlotte. First time John Shire is going to go through the big media craze <laughs> And he's going to have a lot of eyeballs on him. A lot of folks are going to want the opportunity to talk with the Duke men's basketball head coach because for the first time in 42 years, it's a different man walking to the stage as the Duke men's basketball head coach. Yeah, it's going to be a, a different feeling, but um, I think that uh, they got the right guy. And I think, you know, having nine seasons on staff is going to be a, a huge help to him. And uh, I think everyone's looking forward to seeing what uh, what the John Shire product looks like. We've seen his success already on the recruiting trail. We've seen it building this 2022 class of current freshmen. We see the number one class that he's got in 2023 and official visits coming up with 2024 commits. I mean, he's putting the work in there out there on the recruiting trail. But do you get the sense that if anything, this is almost a welcome sign or opportunity for Coach Shire to go to ACC tip off? Because like us, it means that basketball season is just right around the corner. And it's finally time for him to be the head coach to coach basketball. Like, I, I don't know if people remember that or not, Brian, but the purpose of a basketball coach is to coach and participate in those games. And so, exactly. in a way, it, it's like, hey, it's it's almost time to get this off and rolling. Most definitely. I think, you know, for him, I think it'll be a relief when the actual game started. He can sort of get into his, you know, his role, his, his day-to-day, and, uh, you know, get into the meat of the season. I think that's, you know – he mentioned before, you know, it's all circled on the calendar, each, each little thing that passes by, but it's all, you know, a prelude to actual coaching. And I think that's what he's ready for right now. Yeah, I can't wait to see what he's got. I mean, obviously, we've got a lot of different lineup variations that we could talk about on today's show and more. In addition to Coach Shire, however, we'll see Jeremy Roach and Jacob Grandison join him uh, for the Media Day festivities, starting with Jeremy Roach. He's been named the Duke men's basketball team captain for the year. <laughs> going into his junior season, Brian? Yeah, I think he's earned that right. Um, he has, you know, he's done everything that this team has asked of him. And, uh, you know, he's earned uh, the keys, if you will. And I think uh, he's ready for, a, you know, a season where 
instead of being that third or fourth option, he's he's the man. He's he's the guy that's going to sort of drive this team. And I think uh, I think he's ready for it. Frankly, with his performance in the um, the NCAA tournament last year, I think you know this is the sort of you know highway you want for your point guard. You know to, to start slow and then get to the point where okay, he's ready to lead. And I think uh, that's the next step for Jeremy. Can he lead? Uh, so if we start to think about sort of those big questions, I think that Jeremy Roach is going to be given today and in, in, in the following days leading up to the start of the season. I think one of them right out of the gates is what you just brought up there, Brian. Can you sustain the level of play that we saw out of Jeremy Roach in the NCAA tournament? Because that was all American type point guard play. If you're able to stretch that out throughout the course of the year, play for a really good winning team play for a school like Duke, that certainly helps. But can you uh, maintain that level of success and productivity out there on the floor? Can you step into these leadership roles as Mm -hmm. one of the only true returning players with minutes on last year's squad? I'm uh, just kind of brainstorming some of those questions that I expect will be asked today. Oh, most definitely. I think and another one is sort of, you know, being the point guard, you're always going to be presented with choices. Do I take over the game? Do I let the game come to me? Do I dish? Do I score? Those are all the sorts of things that are going to he's going to be presented with from day to day. And the hope is that he doesn't press. The hope is that he just sort of finds his groove and it all comes naturally. But you always have to worry about the, you know, him pressing to have to do this and that instead of just sort of letting it happen. For the Duke men's basketball team, they'll also have Jacob Grandison there. He's a transfer from Illinois, also played basketball at Holy Cross. If you haven't had the opportunity yet to read the profile of him, that Brendan Marks did for The Athletic. I'd encourage that. Also good work at dukeblogger.com with what you do there, Brian. But uh, for somebody like Jacob Grandison, I mean, uh, questions that he could be asked today, first and foremost on a big stage with the ACC Network and the ESPN Family of Networks broadcasting all of the festivities today, why in the world are you going to Duke? After playing at Holy Cross, after playing at Illinois, and knowing that all of these uber-talented freshmen five-star recruits when you were the furthest thing from that as a high school player. Why are you going to Duke? How are you going to fit in to a team like this? I think those are sort of the questions that Grandison could expect. Oh, most definitely. I think the one thing that Grandison brings that this team sorely is going to be needing is shooting. And, and, and obviously we have players coming in that are, that have done it on a lower level, high school level and, and so forth, but only Grandison has done this on a, D1 level. He is a proven shooter. He's a proven asset. He's got the experience. He's a guy that Duke was very, very lucky to get in that he brings pretty much everything that you want from a transfer portal guy. He's a guy that doesn't necessarily need or want the spotlight, but he's productive. He's a winner. He puts the ball in the, you know, in the hole and he's a, and he's a hell of a defender as well. So I think he's for, for Duke, he's the perfect type of transfer. I can't wait to see what he's going to be able to do and add it. Uh, you mentioned being a transfer, becoming a part of the brotherhood, and the fact that already he hasn't even played a game yet. He's been invited by the coaches to represent Duke University, to speak on behalf of the men's basketball team. What an honor, and to already be given that opportunity just a few weeks, few months into being on campus speaks volumes to what Grandison could be for this team. So let's talk a little bit more about ACC tip-off and head coach John Shire after our first time out coming up here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Locked On Blue Devils brought to you today by our friends over at LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager on your small business. You wanna be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the quality qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. As we continue to move forward here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils, I'm JJ Jackson alongside my buddy Brian Horace at Duke Blogger on Twitter. If folks go to the internet and they type in dukeblogger.com, Brian, what are they going to find? Well, coming up fairly shortly is my sort of season preview of uh, what I expect to see from this team, lineups that I expect, 
how I expect this team to play and how I expect the product to look. I love it. Go find it and, and find your work on Twitter as well at Duke Blogger as uh, we're talking about ACC tip off the media day event taking place in Charlotte, the headquarters uh, moving from Greensboro to Charlotte. So uh, fitting that the event once again is being held there in the Queen City in our state. So, Brian, we talk about John Shire taking the stage. We mentioned a couple of questions that you would expect Jeremy Roach and Jacob Grandison to hear. From the basketball perspective on the floor, what type of questions do you think John Shire will be asked as the season nears for his team? Well, obviously, with this being a, a transition year, what's this team going to look like compared to other teams? You know, obviously, Coach K being the, um, you know, the driver all these years, how is his, you know, version of Duke going to be different? You know, is he going to remake this team in his own image? Is it going to be more of a shooting team? Is it going to be more of a, you know, a, a pounded inside team? Those are the sorts of questions I think that uh, he's going to get um, about the product on the floor. And uh, I do expect it to be a lot different than, uh, than what we've seen. What gives you that indication that you think that this could be different? I think just the type of player that he's sort of surrounded, you know, um, himself within this particular uh, this year alone. Like there's a lot of guys that may not be, you know, your your five star recruits that are coming in, but that are good shooters. You know, I think he's um, really solidified the post with a lot of big guys, but dynamic big guys, big guys that can do more than just, you know, dunk. You know, he's got Lively, who's definitely a, a guy that can step out and hit the mid range, can step out and hit the three. So I, I think shooting is going to be a, a much bigger priority, I think, with Shire being at the helm. When asked about, uh, you know, your program, any coach is going to speak about the assistance and the rest of their coaching staff that they've been able to put together as you go into the first year of the job. It's not just a, a solo mission for John Shire, surrounding himself with good people, good coaches, good recruiters. It seems as though he's done that. Again, what do you make of this coaching staff that's been put together for Duke? Um, I think it's an all-star team, honestly. it's uh, he, he couldn't have gotten better guys. I mean, yeah. you know, Chris Carwell is a, is, a, is a winner. He's a teacher. He's a guy that uh, sort of like Nate James was. He's a grittier type of coach. He's going to tell it like it is. I think if someone's going to be the uh, the bad cop, it's going to be uh, Coach Carowell. Um, you know, Jay Lucas is he's a, he's a proven athlete on the recruiting trail. You know, another another guard oriented guy who can uh, you know get in with Jeremy Roach and work with him with the guards and everything. Um, Emil has shown that he's a good teacher. You know, and that's one of the biggest uh, <clears throat> things that both Coach K and Shire talked about is how well Emil knows the game and how well he can you know relay his knowledge of the game to, to, to the younger people. And I think that's going to be huge. And obviously, uh, you know, Coach Shragi, with all of his experience, you know, being a head coach, being a Duke, he knows what it takes. So I think this is the perfect, you know, the perfect staff to surround Shire with, honestly. Yeah, I can't wait to see them get to work and see how they kind of communicate during games, what that mm -hmm. dynamic looks like, uh, how John Shire operates in games and that sort of thing. And so line up specific questions, given the personnel that's out there on the floor. What do you think is the most popular question out there? Is it is it how do you factor in Lively and Filipowski? Uh, what does your guard rotation look like? You've got this Swiss Army knife, it feels like, in Mark Mitchell. Like, I want to get to all of those, but if there were just one, is there any question that's greater than another? I think more or less, who are your starting guards? I mean, obviously, you know Roach is going to be the guy. Right. <clears throat> but what do you put around him? Do you put in Tyrese Proctor and Whitehead? Do you play one or the other at, at first and let, you know, it's, I think those are going to be the huge questions. And I'm not even sure I know the answer to that, honestly, right now. Obviously, Whitehead's out with a little bit of an injury right now. I think he'll be back before the real game start. But I think is, do, does Duke go three guard? Does Duke go, you know, Mitchell at the four? you know, along with Lively at the five. or There's a lot of questions like that right now, and it's going to be hard to to really put a, you know, a stamp on it. And I think it could look different from night to night. I think that um, <clears throat> Shire's going to do things a little bit differently than Coach Ken. I think part of that's going to be having more fluidity in the lineups, and I don't think there's going to be one set group of starters, and I think that's it's going to go from game to game, honestly. Yeah, that's one of the biggest advantages, I feel like, is that it can kind of fluctuate from game to game, like – something simple as like foul trouble, Brian, like mm -hmm. that happens night in and night out. Some guys, all of a sudden the whistle, they've got two quick fouls and you got to make an adjustment to buy you some time until you can get to the locker room at halftime and that sort of thing. And so just to have the kind of versatility that this squad could have is, 
is certainly going to be interesting. I, I think the bigs and how they factor in is just going to be so fascinating to watch because you do have so many guards that we just ma- mentioned uh, that need to factor in. And can Filipowski and Lively truly complement each other on both ends <clears throat> of the floor, offensively and defensively? How in the world do you get Ryan Young some minutes out there? the Northwestern transfer that has been really impressive and some of those scrimmage clips that we've shown access or gotten access to see. And then, you know, you've also got, as I mentioned, Mark Mitchell, who I'm calling a a little Swiss Army knife for the Stuke men's basketball squad. Like the bigs are so fascinating. Yeah, and I think the um, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what lineup they start with and what lineup they end with because I believe that, you know, even though, you know, Whitehead – or not Whitehead, but Lively – and uh, Filipowski are both bigs and both seven footers. They definitely bring different things to the table. Filipowski is a bit more of a scrapper, but he all, but he's also a great passer and a great shooter. And you know, Lively is obviously very bouncy, but I think he has a really emerging jump shot as well. And if you've seen him, his shot is pretty pretty darn fluid for a for a seven footer. So you know, wh- whether they play together or separately, they'll they'll both get you know the right amount of minutes. And I think having a player um, <clears throat> like a uh, the, the the transfer um, Ryan Young Ryan Young is going to be is going to pay huge dividends both in practice and on the floor because that guy's used to banging you know he's yes. he's a huge body yes you know he's a you know he's a lunch pail guy and I think that's only going to help you know Lively and Filipowski get better because they're going to be banging with this guy all practice long and he's going to put a hurting on him and I think that's what they need to prepare for the bigs in the ACC. I mean, you know, I, I love Filipowski and I love Lively, but they got to bang against Baycott, and Baycott's a huge body. You know, he's yes. a guy physical, and so I, I think all three will get minutes. But um, it'll be interesting to see how, you know, these freshmen come along with that body in practice to go against. I think that's going to be huge for them. How do you factor in Mark Mitchell? You know, Mark can do a lot of different things, and I think he has the you know the ability to play the four, the five, and in a pinch, possibly the three. I mean, he 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 has a good handle. He can shoot the ball fairly well, you know, but he's a guy you can plug in a lot of different spots. And I think, you know, there's going to be times where he's going to be asked to play the five. And I think, you know, on on certain lineups, that's going to be fine for Duke. But uh, he's he's going to be asked to do a lot of different things. And I think he's the guy for it. He's been, uh, from all accounts, pretty impressive, you know, during these early practices. And he's uh, he's coming along faster than I think even the staff, you know, thought was possible. I say it all the time. He's also a lefty. and, And as a lefty myself, I've got a special place. (laughs) <laughs> uh, in my heart for those athletes. So, yeah, I, I can't wait to see what this upcoming year looks like. All right, let's take one final time out here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. Our show today is brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar is one of our favorites here with the Lockdown Podcast Network. I love starting my day with a Built Bar. Let me introduce you to a new one of my favorites, the Cookie Dough Chunk Puffs. They've got a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, Like all Built Bars, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. You get all the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, plus it's healthy for you. They only have 160 calories with a whopping 15 grams of protein in there. Run to Built.com to snag a box for you and your family. It will be the perfect treat. Or you can find a really good hiding place and just hoard them all for yourself if you don't want to share with the family. All right, what you need to do is go to built.com, use promo code LOCKEDON15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, or O-N-1-5, and get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKEDON15, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-1-5. LOCKEDON15 is your 15% off your order promo code when you go to built.com. All right, final few moments of today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils alongside My pal Brian Horace at Duke Blogger on Twitter. A lot of great stuff, including a full season preview for Duke men's basketball coming soon to DukeBlogger.com. And then the season gets going. A game against Jacksonville on November 7th to kick off the season. And then the following week, a big showdown against Kansas in the Champions Classic. I kind of like having a couple of games to kind of get a feel for one another before you just jump right into it against Kansas. Yeah, definitely. Um, Having, you know... A couple of tune-up games prior to you know jumping into this, you know what's going to be a giant matchup at least in, in terms of coverage, is uh, is very it's going to be very good for this team, including their scrimmage um, on the 29th against you you know the secret scrimmage against Houston. Yeah. We know where they can go through some uh, simulations and some you know some game situations. I think it's going to be huge for this team as well. I think it was huge for last year's team. 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, about just over a week or so before the season takes place, you're right, they have that secret scrimmage against Houston. Houston's got a lot of dudes coming back from last mm-hmm. year's squad that made a really deep run. Kelvin Sampson's doing great things with that program uh, to watch, and so that's going to be awesome for Duke to be tested. Uh, who knows? We mentioned Villanova last year. Both of those teams wind up in the Final Four after their preseason secret scrimmage a season ago, so hopefully the same omens – are coming for Duke men's basketball this season. I would take it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then, yeah, we mentioned those those two first games of the season, Jacksonville being the first one, and and just the idea of getting some time to play also at home in Cameron Indoor Stadium Mm -hmm. for those guys to experience it. And then, two, following that, you kind of get a feel for what to expect uh, when you get a game like Kansas on the schedule. Oh, most definitely. They're going to be tested early. I mean, you know, even after Canvas, uh, Be- Bellerman's a, a heck of a team as well. You know, people don't really dive into the numbers for that team, but they're um, they're very well coached, you know, very, very tough out. And uh, these are all going to be really good tests. I think Duke does a good job of scheduling teams, you know, not because they may not be higher level teams, but because they've done well in their situations, you know, whether it's the D2 champ here and there and, you know, teams that have, uh, you know, even some of the the, the lesser teams they play are, you know, first round tournament type teams as well. So I think, you know, Shire knows what he's doing in the scheduling. And I think that Kansas test is going to be great, but I think the, the games after that are going to be also, you know, good to test this team. Where's the fast forward button. I'm ready to get to it. 26 time, days. Away. <laughs> we are almost there. We'll get some Duke men's basketball. Brian, the time is always greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for coming back on the podcast. Give me one final plug for dukeblogger.com. Yeah, uh, now that the season's, uh, you know, starting to heat up, things are starting to, you know, everything's going. We're going to start having, you know, quite a few articles, starting with the season preview, you know, what I think Duke's chances are in each game, the lineups I think are going to be the most important, the go-to lineups for Shire in certain situations, all that's coming up uh, this week. And my favorite, when we start to get into game action, you got the game previews before every game, broadcast info, always detail, just the, the specific things that you need to know for Duke men's basketball is always listed there at dukeblogger.com. So uh, keep up the good work, Brian. And thank you so much again for coming on the program today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Take care, man. That's my good pal, Brian Horace at Duke blogger, joining us here on today's episode of lockdown blue devils. And that wraps up another edition of this podcast. Once again, please subscribe, follow us on YouTube, like the video, share it with your friends, continuing to grow on the video platform and more. Also leave us a five-star rating and written review if you will, there for the podcast. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.